few words about how you got hooked up, what was your relationship with the organization, and how you felt about them. The first time I actually saw them live is at one of the IAJE conventions. Obviously, many years ago, Bill Dobbins was the musical director. Uh, they were pe- obviously appearing in New York. There was, there was a project of Peter Erskine was playing. I think it was a project of his music, I think. And um, so after the thing, of course, all the pl- of, all the writers like jumped around trying to get the gig, you know. And the manager at the time was a gentleman by the name of Wolfgang Hirschmann, who uh, who beside dealing with the band was also, I believe, the recording engineer, along with uh, G- G.T. Campy, produced the Frenchie Cla- uh, French Clark, what am I saying? Kenny Clark, Francie Bolin recordings. And um, so, of course, everybody wanted to, to do something with that band. So I, so I'm the opposite. I just backed off. I didn't even get, get anywhere near this group. Gretchen said, she's, so my wife went over there and started talking to him. And it was, I don't want to get through the whole thing, but they had a whole little thing going, like little, almost like a, a comedy routine. And so, and uh, said, well, I'm Michael Benny's uh, wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. And in the interim, some of the guys came over to me. Uh, Olivier Peters, one of the saxophonists, who obviously knew my name and, and all that stuff, come over to me and said, well, we really love you to have you come over and do a project. All right, great. All right, so the, the Wolfgang comes up to me, talks to me. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. Let's talk. So the original thing was weird. The original thing was he said to me, what about doing a thing with Maynard? Uh, stuff of you did and then stuff, you know, some other stuff. You know, I said, fine. So we talked to Maynard. I, I called him, great. Wanted, we were all set to do it. Then some other people got involved <laughs> on Maynard's end and it went kaplunk. So, okay, so then uh, in the interim, uh, Jim McNeely and I had done a project with the Carnegie Hall Band of Chick Corea's music. So I did about four or five, six charts. And then so I called Wolfgang, contacted him. I said, man, the thing with me now, it's not happening. He said, okay, I'm sorry about that. I said, well, we just did this project with, with, uh, with uh, the Carnegie Band of Chick's music. I said, why don't I do that? Bring that over. He said, well, let's, I don't, I said, all I have is maybe four or five charts. So what can we do? I don't know how Patty Orson's name got brought up in this because I worked with Patty in the studios. So, okay, uh, the thing with, with the Chick Corea stuff, I said, um, but we ate the two French horns in the No problem. Okay. So you go over there, Patty's over there. Now, I don't know, somebody gave her some charts or something, but she didn't like the intros on things, didn't like the endings on things. Uh, so I did all that work, you know, on the gig. On the, on, the, on the site, changing intros, fixing the endings. And then uh, we had just done the, with the GRP uh, recording, we did the um, uh, West Side Story album. And I had done a couple of charts, America and all that. Uh, so we included P- uh, Patty in this whole thing. So the, the bottom line is we did the project, we did the concert, everybody loved it. And all of a sudden I was, uh, you know, approached about being the musical director okay you know i was obviously great idea i was and i really had to think about it because it it uh, the first thing i asked is do i have to move there because dobbins was actually living there he had moved there and they said no you don't have to do that you had a certain schedule that uh theoretically there was a, a certain schedule so i started the, the i started you know, working with the band, and uh, it was interesting because my my approach from working with band like Maynard, I, I'm like pretty loose in front of the band. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not one to to rehearse the band to death. You know, I want I you know uh, there's certain ways I approach the band that was different than Dobbins did, for instance. Um, we uh, the, the the hardest thing. First of all, I fell in love with the band right away, too, you know. Uh, and and, 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 and as time moved on, as it got to months and weeks and all that, got to be where I started to write for the band, not just writing a chart for a big band. So you're writing for, like, the, you know, this, this guy, you're writing for this tenor player, you're writing for this trumpet player. You know, you're writing, it's like, you know, with Basie or Duke's band, you're writing, you're writing for the person. And... Uh, Wound up, 
wound up staying there a lot longer than I did almost 11 years. But in the interim, I was doing, I think, I, um, I think I must have written close to 800 charts for the band over those 11 years. And 99% of the time, I did all the writing. Once in a while, one time I had Dennis McCrow write a couple of charts for me because I was in a bind. But basically, I did all the writing, you know, and I was writing constantly, plus doing other projects. And I really, and to this day, I feel like that's, they're, they're like my other brothers and cousins and sisters in that band. And I didn't expect to be there that many years, to be honest with you. And uh, they kept renewing the contract. And at one point, talking about a successor, and, and they didn't have a, a, a person in mind. So after nine years, they asked me, would I do they extend my contract for two more years while they find somebody? But I know I'm, I'm kind of meandering around, but the idea was that uh, I really enjoyed my working with the band. You know, I, we had a lot of good projects. Uh, the, the only Grammy that Patty and I both won was the result of doing the Scursion project with the, with the WR band and strings we had it. But with Lovano brought Lovano over his first project with the symphony, with Symphonica. Uh, but just some really wonderful projects with Randy Brecker, Schofield, you know, uh, just some just a slew of good things. And, and uh, it was just, and, and the social end of it with the band was interesting to me because I really feel, to this day, I feel at home in Cologne. It's it's funny, you know, I feel more at home in Cologne than I do in Patterson, New York sometimes, you know. And and uh, uh, the camaraderie, it's got to be like a real social thing and musically, um, but when I first went there, I was used to opening up the charts. And, and I don't know that they were used to that happening at first. You know, I mean, was, and, and the person was like, oh, what's going on kind of a thing. And then they, they were starting to groove. You know, the guys playing some 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 good some good music. And, you know, we, we can stay off the chart for a few minutes or two, you know, get back to earth. So, and it got to be where, uh, uh, it was, it, was, it was a very interesting process for me with the band and their process of getting working with me. That was the, the most interesting part about the thing. And um, like again, we did a lot of great projects. And to this day, I love working with them. For the uninitiated, what does it mean when you say you open up a chart? Okay, so if you've got a 16 bar solo, if the thing, if the thing is happening and, and the rhythm section is burning and the solo is burning, we might need 48 bars. You know, just you know, just kind of getting away from the written, the written chart for a while, and uh, you know, it, it, the, the same respect. If a guy is not doing so well, you bring in the band right away. <laughs> but you know, and fortunate that band was some really strong soloists, and it, it got to be fun. I'd like, I'd like to hear the rhythm section play. I mean, not from Maynard's band. When Maynard we play our Maynard's band, he let the cats play. He'd open up the charts, and then you just bring, in, you know, bring in the band. Then he goes high. It was my thing. It was, it was cool. And I liked that idea. And a lot of bands did it basically sometimes when you heard them live, he would do it. Open up the charts. Uh, Woody certainly, I heard that, you know. So it's not out of the realm of what's something strange. It might have been in, for, for them for some reason. Because like Dobbins is a great musician, as you know. And he had a way of working with the band, and I had a way of working with the band. And they were both both good, except it was just different. But that's that's the version of opening up the chart. Let the cat let the cats play.
Thank you.